Here with Josh Bell in the Nationals batting cage. You're all suited up. You got the full game uni on. You got bat in hands. Your gloves are on. What do you say we go inside the cage and do a little breakdown? Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's talk about the origins of you becoming a switch hitter. Uh, your dad was a big factor in your baseball upbringing. And I think I remember you telling me that he played a big part in you becoming a switch hitter. Tell us about that. Yeah, so I, I guess the story is my, my dad was watching a baseball game and there was a switch hitter um, on the TV. He was a football player, uh, track uh, star in high school and in college. And he got hurt in college. He was like, you know what? If I have a son, he's going to play baseball. And when he was watching that baseball game, he was like, he's going to switch hit. And I was three at the time. I started Little League the next year. And I was just hitting uh, righty, and then the next year we went into switch hitting when I was five. And I would go back and forth every at bat from five pretty much until 12, until the competition got better and I actually started seeing more and more lefties where I could actually switch it up. So you didn't really have a say in the matter? I had no you... idea what I was doing. <laughs> I was just in the backyard, you know, having a, a blast with my dad whenever he came home from work. We're going to start with your left-handed swing because that is where you get more of okay. the at bats. Just break us down cool. on what your keys are with your left-handed swing, and when you're going right, what are you feeling from this side of the plate? Okay, well, um, generally I start on the tee. I like to do high tee, but not too extreme. Um, and the first swings of the day, I try to take my legs out of it. So uh, I want to feel like my hands are winning the race. I don't want to feel like You've seen me hit a ground ball and it looks like my shoulders fly out, my hands lag behind, and I put the ball in play this way. Mm -hmm. When I'm right, it feels like my hands are beating my hips forward and I can get the barrel out in front before my hips turn through. Gotcha. So that's, for me, is the tightest swing. And for me, and the cage especially, I try to have either a ball off the bottom of the L screen or like a bullet right back up the middle like it's a bad swing for me if it hits the top of the cage. Try to keep my feet out of it and just focus on a little bit of rhythm and low ball flight. So these early swings are really more about the upper body than the lower body. Right, just hands winning the race down to the baseball. I'm trying to have a, a tight swing, almost like my barrel's coming across my cheek coming down to the ball. Okay. And that would be an A swing right there. What about leg kick? You mentioned from the left side of the plate, you have the ability maybe to have more of a leg kick. I've seen at times you've got a somewhat pronounced one and it seems like at other times it's a little, uh, it's lessened a little bit. Yeah, a little knee tuck. Yeah. It really just depends on, I call it like a dance with a pitcher. Hmm. Like uh, if a guy's really quick to home, if he's really sporadic, if he's like a 1-1, one, one, we say 1-2, mm -hmm. pop time to home. Yep. Um, that's when I'll try to do something subtle, or if my timing feels off, it's almost like a toe tap, mm -hmm. really low to the ground. And if I'm trying to juice balls, if I've seen a guy quite a few times, if I'm feeling good, if I'm feeling confident, if I know he's a fastball guy and he's gonna come with you know, his best fastballs, I might work a little bit higher. Mm -hmm. But generally, I'm trying to get back to that same feeling of the no stride, both feet in the ground, planted, and my hands winning the race. Mm -hmm. So it's just a timing thing of how I get there. And you adjust it by the pitcher, by the situation, mm -hmm. by how you're feeling on that given day. Yeah, it really just fluctuates. And when I'm good, it seems like I can do whatever I want, mm -hmm. and the bat to ball skills will take over. And if not, generally I'll just back off. I'll do less and less. I'll get wider and wider just trying to bear down and, and put the barrel on the ball. Let's get one more from this side and then we can turn around and we can do the right side. Not a bad way to finish. Yeah, right? And I guess we can start with just basically the biggest differences you feel like uh, in terms of mechanics or in terms of approach from here to there. Yeah, I, f I feel like uh... I'm right side dominant. Like okay. if I were to, you know, shake your hand, you know, right, raise my hand, whatever, kick a football, it's all going to be on my right side. Okay. So when I pick up a bat, 
right-handed, I feel like I'm swinging it like this. Uh -huh. And when I pick up a bat left-handed, it feels like I'm swinging it like this. So there's big differences, but I feel like when I'm good righty, I'm stacked on my backside. I can either do it an early stride and get my barrel to the baseball, or I can kind of rock into it. Staying simple, staying free and easy, and I'll probably just do the same thing on this side. I feel like righty, one of the big cues for me is going from one shoulder to the other shoulder. Uh -huh. And that's something that keeps me from losing my barrel too. Okay. Come right here and focus on finishing as close to my body as possible with my torso, as opposed to losing it, losing my hands and wrapping Casting. around the baseball. Yeah. And that's what the best do. You see Soto do it. Soto finishes like this or like this. Uh -huh. You'll see Cruz, he'll finish like this. See, I love seeing Griffey growing up, Yeah, that finish. Um, you know, the, the guys that are gonna be Hall of Famers, they all have tight swings. Um, some guys will get away with some length from years to years, but the guys that do it, you know, for a decade, those are the guys that say really, really tight to the baseball. And if they're not hitting homers, they're still hitting line drives. There's one. Are you still feeling the same thing from the right side in terms of your hands leading the way? Yeah, that's the thought. That's the thought, and it doesn't happen. As soon as I turn my back side, my hips will fire and my hands will come, but that thought keeps me from, especially in the drill work, the guy's deceptive up there, mm -hmm. he's gonna try to get me off time, but you know, I wanna say 10 times out of 10 in the, in the cage, I wanna take my A swing. And that's the feeling of my ace swing, my hands winning the race. But yeah, I'd say any young hitter, mess around with the tee. Mm -hmm. I feel like all the greats will swear by it. And you can pretty much simulate any of your weaknesses, whatever they right. might be. Right. I know Juan tries to back the, the tee up almost in here. That's why he can make really late decisions. That's why he's got the best he's eyes. he's comfortable with the ball de being deep on him. He can hit a homer. Me, I'd have to get the ball just a little bit further out in front. Uh -huh. So I have to make more and more decisions. It's a click sooner than he does. But he's so low and so connected back here. Mm -hmm. He can catch it deeper and still hit it out oppo. So if you had any Quick advice for young players that want to switch hit. They want to be like Josh Bell. What advice do you have, not just on hitting in general, but in terms of the art of switch hitting? I would say it takes time and it, it takes like opportunity. I feel like a lot of kids get caught up in what team they want to play for, you know, 13U, 14U, 15U, I have to be on this team so I'll get these looks. In actuality, like Albert Pujols was a 26 rounder. Like, if you're going to be a good player, focus on being a good player at 23. You don't have to be the best player in the world at 13. If you want to switch it, you have to get the reps. So you want to be on a team, it's going to allow you to do it. It's going to allow you to struggle. Because um, it's not always easy. And, you know, even big leaguers will give up on it. Um, some have success doing it. But, you know, for me, the game that I play, ball's always coming back into me. I can get off the dish a little bit and really focus on trying to get my hands extended the right way. Um, and hopefully it keeps me in the big leagues for a long time. Yeah, we hope so too. Josh, this has been awesome. Thanks so much for doing this. Cool. Thanks, Dan. Josh Bell taking us inside the cage.